Okay, so here is the roof of Stan the Van. In the front, I have the Max Air fan that can be uh, operated in all weather, which works really well. We have the 10 speed reversible one. Uh, we did not get the um, remote control. So it was about a little over 300 bucks for that. And there's a nice little spot on the Pro Master where you can install it and you can end up with flat metal all the way around to attach the flange and pretty simple installation. Although when I started installing mine, as soon as I cut the hole, thunder started. But luckily it only rained for a little bit. Uh, nothing major was able to cover it up pretty easily. And then behind there we have the uh, solar panels. I have two 100 watt solar panels and they are attached to, I really like this. It's called a uh, custom cargo makes it. It's 8020 aluminum. The brackets are come specifically for ProMaster to attach it to the roof. If you don't know, there are three hard points for attaching stuff to the roof where you don't have to drill holes. I really didn't want to drill holes in my roof to install the solar panels. The aluminum angles I made from stuff I had here at the house, uh, just cut some brackets. What's cool about the 8020 is you can slide a carriage bolt in those slots and attach anything to it. I plan to put a couple cross beams to throw a kayak up here someday. And then this is really a cool thing here. This is the uh, TV antenna and it's magnetic. Uh, just stick to the roof there and this thing works great. Everywhere we go, we scan the channels, you know, set up the TV and we always get plenty of TV channels to watch uh, news. Uh, only one place did we not get a lot of channels and that was Athens, Georgia. But that was actually before we had this, but we'll try this out next time we go up that way. And then uh, there's the cables routed uh, back and I routed those through the uh, rear camera housing plastic piece with some plastic grommets that you can get off of uh, Amazon. The little pass wires through, watertight. Works really well. So there is the roof of Stan the Van. Uh, hope yours is good and working for you. Pretty simple installation. So I thought I'd give you guys a little tour of Stan the Van today and uh, show you how how we made them and uh, different things we like about them. So uh, this is our outside setup, which uh, is a, uh, a step tonsu piece that we made. There's another video about that. It ends up being more of a table that we use outside and inside. We, ha we love our little folding rocking chairs. We have two of them actually, and uh, the mat to keep the dirt out. And uh, that's pretty cool, so we like that. And then when you step inside, And we have to have a step to get inside because we're short. So but we come inside and uh, the normal setup that we have, we have the bed in the back, uh, the TV over there. A lot of people say, man, that's a big TV. But what I like about it is it was cheap. It was on sale at Walmart for like 58 bucks. So we went ahead and got that. So, and I don't know where we got that license tag, but kind of fits the motif in here. Those are just Ikea pegboard units with various things that you can strap to them. Uh, little bungees to hold things on while you're driving and uh, works pretty well over here i have um a, there's a receptacle on each side along with a 12 volt outlet each side in the bed so i can charge things and uh, we have lights up on the ceiling uh, leds there's six of them uh, i can turn one side off both sides back and forth so that's pretty cool I haven't really finished the edge off back there yet. I'm still running wires and stuff through there. So we'll trim that out someday. And, uh, but I think you're gonna like this. Um, we don't, we opted to not do a refrigerator, uh, electric one. We use an ice box and I'll show you how that works. It's behind that door there. And uh, the way it works is we have a little um, latch to hold it in and then it just comes out. And there is our Yeti knockoff cooler, which works really well. We've kept things in there for well, the longest trip we made was running from Dorian when it was hot. We had cold stuff for a week. We had a frozen uh, gallon jug of water that kept everything cool. It worked really well. Another thing we did when it comes to cooking, you notice we don't have a, a cooktop in here. We do have a sink, we have running water. And uh, I just did the standard uh, great water tank and fresh water tank and a water pump did get a nice uh, 
spick it off Amazon, which is pretty cool. A little, a little fancy. That um, sink we got from a thrift store. I put it in there. I think it was like ten ten dollars, ten or fifteen dollars. So it kind of fit the brass motif. The backsplash is just some expanded metal we got from uh, uh, Home Depot. So I think you'll like that. But anyway, back to the stove. We did not put a stove in, but we opted instead to do a uh, butane stove. And uh, it worked really nice. And we can just take it out of its case. Put it wherever you want. This clips over. And then you engage the tank. And presto, you have heat. You have cooking appliance. What I like about this is we can use it inside, outside, wherever we want. Uh, not heat up the van in the summertime and cook outside. I think it'll work pretty well. Both of the light switches are right here for inside the van. We like the, um, these little latches are on all the doors so that they don't go flat around while you're driving. And that works really well. They're like three bucks at Home Depot. We painted them the brass color so it would match. And then another thing we did is this originally was going to be a cabinet for storage. So we do have one shelf in here where we keep our coffee pot, coffee supplies. But this spot down here, the dog commandeered and that's where she likes to lay. That's her little pillow in there. And when we start rolling, she just goes in behind the curtain and hangs out in there. She doesn't like to be out and about when the van's rolling. So she's safe in there and she likes it. So we let her have that spot. For that reason, we did not put doors on the cabinets. We put curtains just to access it easier. Plus the dog can go in and out. And then we got this little piece here at uh, Eco Relics up in Jacksonville. So you might want to check that place out if you're up in Jacksonville. They got all kinds of cool stuff. The flooring is just vinyl plank that glues down. You peel and stick it down. And I got it really inexpensively and have plenty of extra pieces if we need to change a piece. And if we wanted to change it in the future to something else, it's not a big deal to do that. Another thing I have is an OBD2 sensor so I can monitor the engine. And I send that data to an iPad mini that I've mounted to the dash. So it has a little suction cup flexible arm holder there. And there's many things you can uh, look at inside the, the car's computer to see engine performance and uh, maybe foresee any problems coming. Many of you know we probably, uh, many of you know we just installed a new engine and we wanna take good care of that. So right now I have displayed the RPMs and the temperature, but there's all kinds of data you can play with. There's all kinds of apps out there that read these things. I'll put a link to the apps and the uh, OBD2 reader that I put in there and uh, so you can check one out yourself. But it's pretty cool to be able to interrogate the uh, onboard diagnostics computer on the fly uh, as you're driving so i highly recommend that okay so here's the basement for stand the van this is where we have our electrical uh, both dc and ac electrical there's a 2000 watt inverter right there we have some lights up on the there up underneath the basement and uh we just do a open storage. We have different boxes and tubs. We can reconfigure for however we're traveling. This is my camera to go bag for my different camera attachments and stuff. So, but simple, we, we like a simple fault. I have a uh, shore power cables come in there and uh, we do have the little stealthy shore power connection down there. So, but that's the basement. We can put a lot of stuff in there. Um, it's not tall enough for bikes like some people like, but uh, we're not avid bikers, so if we wanted to, we'd figure a way to put one in there, or put it on the back. So there you go, there's the basement. Oh, fully. Um, I know you're gonna ask about not seeing a bathroom in the van, and that's by design. Uh, we're kind of urban campers. We kind of go where there's facilities occasionally, and we don't mind doing that. Our thought was if we go somewhere where there are no facilities, uh, we will take a portable toilet and uh, uh, wash outside the van, you know, for out in the wilderness somewhere. We don't have a problem doing that. We 
we were hikers. Uh, we've hiked the Appalachian, most of the Appalachian Trail, and uh, we've managed to do just fine without a bathroom out there. So as we get older though, uh, we try to go to places that are have some facilities or stop by places where we can use their facilities. Uh, stand by on that too, because Valerie's making a video on um, bathrooms things, bathroom etiquette and bathroom ideas. And uh, she's gonna call it, it's my potty and I'll cry if I want to. So stand by for those videos, they should be pretty interesting.